Well, good morning and welcome. It is Christmas Day and we are all excited to be here. It is a wonderful time of the year, is it not? In a year that's been pretty full on. It is such a joy that you get to gather with us and to be with us. And so we want to know that you have. So please check in. Let us know via the email or the SMS number down below because we want to know that people have come from all over to celebrate Christmas. It has been one of those harder years, maybe a dark year for some of you. And yet at this time of year, we get to come together, to gather, to remember, to be reminded of the joy that is Christmas. Because at Christmas time, we remember that the hope of the world came, that a weary world can rejoice, that we can sing joy because the Lord has come. And so why don't we start our service singing along with these guys, joy to the world for the Lord has come. to go and grab some scrap paper, some pens and, pa- pe- pens and pencils and get ready for some fun with Robin. For the rest of us, we're going to keep singing a carol, O Come All Ye Faithful. And this song invites us to come, to sing and to declare that Christ is the Lord. So would you please join us as we keep singing together.
Our first Bible reading comes from Isaiah chapter 9, beginning at verse 1 and ending at verse 7. This is the word of the Lord. Nevertheless, there will be no more gloom for those who are in distress. In the past, he humbled the land of Nebulun and the land of Nephtali. But in the future, he will honor Galilee of the nations by the way of the sea beyond the Jordan. The people walking in darkness have seen a great light. On those living in the land of deep darkness, a light has dawned. You have enlarged the nation and increased their joy. They rejoice before you as people rejoice at the harvest, as warriors rejoice when dividing the plunder. For as in the day of Midian's defeat, you have shattered the yoke that burdens them, the bar across their shoulders, the rod of their oppressor. Every warrior's boot used in battle and every garment rolled in blood will be destined for burning, will be fuel for the fire. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the greatness of his government and peace there will be no end. He will reign on David's throne and over his kingdom, establishing and upholding it with justice and righteousness from that time on and forever. The zeal of the Lord Almighty will accomplish this. What wonderful words of promise. Now, kids, I hope that you are ready because Robin is going to come and join us right now. So I hope you've got your pens and your paper or those things you need together because she's coming now for our kids' talk. So enjoy. Well, Happy Christmas. Here we are back again. Hope you've got your paper and, paper and pencils ready. All right, we are going to play a game of Pictionary. So this is for your whole family, all right? So you're going to need to set yourselves up. So only the drawer can look at the screen, all right? The, everyone else will have their backs to the screen, all right? So you've got to hide your screen. Only the drawer gets to watch because that will be how you find out what you are going to draw, okay? So choose a drawer. Have you chosen your drawer? Okay, when you've chosen your drawer, that's good. Everybody else now, you set out with where you can't see the screen. All right, are you in position? All right, I hope you're ready. You've got your pencils ready. I'm going to draw as well, just in case someone's at home who's by themselves, doesn't have someone else to draw for you, then that's okay. I'll draw for you. And I don't do that very well, so it's really tricky probably trying to figure out what it is. But, okay, let's go. Are you ready to play Pictionary? Drawer, ready? Everybody else? Not facing the screen? It's a secret. All right, here we go. Let's get drawing. First one. Okay, how'd you go? All right, that, you've only got as long as, as I have to draw. All right, it was a sheep. Okay, big cheer for those people who guessed that it was a sheep. All right, that was our first one. Let's go to our next one. Drawers, are you ready? Everybody else in position? All right, let's go. We are going to start drawing now. All right, how did you go? I'm sure you're doing better drawing than me. It was supposed to be a camel. <laughs> All right, let's go again for another one. Ready? Okay. If you want to switch drawers, you could, but only one person gets to look to see what it is. All right, you're ready to get another picture ready to go? All right, here we go. All right, are you ready? <laughs> Did you guess what it was? It's a donkey. All right, I'm sure you've got lots of much better drawings than what I do. All right, let's see if we can go to the next one. Are you ready? Here we go. <laughs> a 
Okay, how did you go? It's an angel, that's right. An angel. All right, well, we're going to keep going. Are you ready? You're all set again? Here we go. Let's next one. All right, did you get it? Yes, it is Mary. All right, Mary, that lovely lady who got chosen by God to bear the son Jesus. All right, are you ready for your next one? Are you in position? You ready? Okay, let's go. All right, okay. Pretty hard to guess, isn't it? Could be anybody, but no, it is supposed to be Joseph. All right, there is our Joseph. Now, are you ready? You're hanging on there, <laughs> ready for our game? Let's do another one. All right, are you ready for your next one? Here we go. All right, how'd you go? Did you guess? Some sort of good little hints about that one, isn't it? If you've got a little crook and a little sheep, you probably know it's a shepherd. All right, ready for your next one? I think we, one more to go. Are you ready? One more. Let's, let's go. Here it is. Right, how'd you go? Did you guess? It's baby Jesus. That's right. Okay, there goes our game. All right, was it chaos at home? <laughs> well, I hope it was a whole lot of fun for you to play this wonderful game as a family. And hopefully, maybe you've just uh, got to play with some other people around with you. All right, so all of those things that we have just drawn, they all come up in our Bible passage for today. So in Luke chapter 2 and verse 5, it says, Everyone had to go to their own hometown to be listed. So Joseph, who he drew, had to leave Nazareth in Galilee and go to Bethlehem in Judea. Long ago, Bethlehem had been King David's hometown, and Joseph went there because he was from David's family. Now Mary, who we just drew, Mary was engaged to Joseph and travelled with him to Bethlehem. She was soon going to have a baby, and while they were there, she gave birth to her firstborn son. She dressed him in, in baby clothes and laid him in a bed of hay because there was no room for them in the inn. That was baby Jesus in the manger. But that night, in the fields near Bethlehem, some shepherds were guarding their sheep. All at once an angel came down to them from the Lord, and the brightness of the Lord's glory flashed around them. The shepherds were frightened, but the angel said, Don't be afraid. I have good news for you, which will make you everyone happy. This very day in King David's hometown, a saviour was born for you. So at Christmas time, we remember that Jesus, our saviour, was born. Jesus is our king, our saviour, and he is the one that we celebrate. His birth coming into the world when God sent his son for us to be our saviour. So I hope that at this Christmas time that we can be really just after a year of so much chaos and trouble and hardship and sadness that we can come to rejoice of all the good things that God has for us. So let's enjoy Christmas together celebrating Jesus' birthday. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you so much that you love us so much that you sent Jesus to be our saviour. You sent him to be the one who was born as a baby in such humble beginnings. But we thank you that he became king, that he died and he rose again, ruling forever. And we thank you that he can be our saviour and our king. Amen. 
Well, I hope you continue to have a wonderful day celebrating Jesus, our Saviour. I hope the kids had a wonderful time drawing and playing along with Robin. We now have a chance to reflect on the coming of the light of the world. We're going to sing an item for you now, but please feel free to join along and sing with us. For a miracle, I heart longs for a little bit of hope. Oh, come, oh, come, Emmanuel. A child prays for peace on earth, and she's calling out from the sea over. Oh, come, oh, come. Emmanuel Can you hear the angel sing hope has come and with that in mind I'm going to lead us in prayer so would you please pray with me loving heavenly father the God of Christmas you said long ago through the prophet Isaiah the people walking in darkness have seen a great light on those living in the land of deep darkness a light has dawned a light has dawned thank you Lord that in a world of darkness the light has come that we get to know and celebrate the reality of Jesus coming at Christmas time. 
We rejoice before you. We rejoice knowing that this day brings hope to all people because in Christ, the light of the world has come and so we have hope. Yet, Lord, many of us have felt or are feeling the burden of walking in darkness. As we live in this land, in this world, we are pained. And so we pray for those who are hurting, for all those who are living in difficulty, who are suffering the impacts of darkness. May your light shine upon them this Christmas season. We particularly pray for those who are experiencing Christmas without loved ones, maybe for the first time, be that because of COVID restrictions, people across countries, borders, in homes and hospitals, maybe due to relational breakdown or other barriers. Or maybe it's because they've lost a loved one this year, they've passed away. May your light shine and comfort them. We pray for all of those who have suffered because of COVID in varying degrees, those traumatized, reflecting on this year, and those anxious about what next year may offer. And also for those that this year hasn't been any more difficult than others, may your light shine upon them. For a light has dawned and Christ has come. Protect us, we pray, in this Christmas season. Draw families and friends together safely in such a way that they can celebrate. May people see the great light of Christ's coming and with certainty know that Christ will return. We ask, Lord, that you give this weary world hope in and through Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We're going to have our second Bible reading now. Our second Bible reading comes from Luke chapter 2, verse 8 to 20. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today, in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. Suddenly, a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace to those on whom his favor rests. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in the manger. When they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told them about this child, And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. But Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things they had heard and seen, which were just as they had been told. In just a moment, Angie's going to come and speak to us about the weary world that rejoices. And when we hear that line, don't we just think of this song? We're about to sing, A thrill of hope, the weary world rejoices. Would you please join us as we sing together, O Holy Night. O Holy Night, the stars are brightly shining. It is the night of the dear Savior's birth.
of 2020, bushfires, storms, floods, tired, COVID-19, unprecedented, tired, lockdown, Zoom, online work, school, uni and church, tired, toilet paper, stressed, frantic, vaccine, tired, masks, social distancing, Quarantine, tired. COVID cases, death, tired. Fear, anxious, worried, tired. Job keeper, job seeker, closed borders, tired. Christmas. A thrill of hope, the weary world rejoices for yonder breaks a new and glorious morn. Fall on your knees, O oh, hear the angel voices. O night divine, O night when Christ was born. Well, we know that the world is weary. You're tired and I'm tired. But there's nothing like a pandemic to throw us off course, is there? Yet in a positive way, the pandemic has forced us to refocus on the things that really matter in 2020. Knowing God, loving family, caring for others, supporting the most vulnerable Introducing people to Jesus Christ, living in view of eternity. And Christmas reminds us that Christ brings a message of hope to the world. To the weary, the sad, the broken, the struggling. We've all been looking forward to Christmas, haven't we? Now, Tim Keller, the American writer, says, Christmas means not just hope for the world, despite all its unending problems, but hope for you and me despite all our unending failings. Friends, at Christmas, God stepped into human history to change the world, to transform the world, to bring both hope and joy and peace and love and forgiveness and life to a broken world. It's a world that is broken by sin and the effects of sin, a world characterized by human rebellion towards God and a creation suffering the judgment of God, we're told in Romans 8. In 2020, there have been 1.6 million deaths worldwide by COVID-19, 73 million cases and growing. But friends, it's not just COVID. 8.7 million died of hunger in 2020. Others die in war or lack of clean water or through heart disease. Over 60 million people will die in 2020. And therefore, at this time of year, we need the hope of Christmas because brokenness and failure and death is everywhere. We see it in wars and terrorism, in earthquakes and bushfires and floods and hailstorms and hurricanes, millions of refugees looking for safety across the globe, drownings, car accidents, bashings, sexual abuse, domestic violence, broken marriages, cancer and death. We see it very clearly at difficult family gatherings at Christmas, you know, that brother or sister you don't get on with, that mother or father who let you down, that son or daughter who refuses to speak to you, 
the loved one who died in 2020 and won't be with you this Christmas. We need some hope, don't we? We need some peace. We need Christmas. I love the words of Colin Buchanan when he was asked about what he wished for at Christmas one year, and he said this, I'm more of a prayer than a wisher. This Christmas I pray that the priceless peace won by God on earth, Jesus Christ, would be recovered and treasured by all who yearn for lasting joy. Sure, I'd like some nice fishing gear, but our family, our country, and our world is aching for something that hundreds of thousands of Aussies will actually be singing about this Christmas. Joy to the world, the Lord is come. Well, friends, it's Christmas, and a saving king has been born. You see, when Jesus, the God-man, was born, an angel of the Lord appeared on the hills of Bethlehem. He proclaimed the message, or God's message, to a nation under the domination of a foreign power, under the Romans, and ruled by a tyrant king. And we know from Isaiah chapter 9, the 8th century prophet, that the people were looking forward to a brand new day with a brand new king. It was in our first Bible reading today. There will be no more gloom for those who were in distress. For to us a child is born, and to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders. It's a message given to the shepherds in Luke chapter 2. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. The angel said to them, do not be afraid. I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is Christ the Lord. I love those words, do not be afraid. God is in this. You may be undervalued and unloved shepherds, but God has a message for you, shepherds. A Savior has been born. Relax, don't be stressed. This is unprecedented in the message that you are receiving. Trust me, the angel says. And friends, don't we need to hear these words this year? Words from God, do not be afraid. God's got this. God is in control of his world. He knows what's happening. He knows about COVID-19. He knew about it beforehand, and he knows about it now. And God is able to work even through, through difficulty and calamity to fulfill his purposes. And God says to us, do not be afraid. The angel announces good news. I love this. It's not bad news. It's good news. It brings life, not death. And friends, the gospel is the best news in the world. It's worth believing and it's worth sharing. And maybe this Christmas you'll need to take a step of faith to believe in this Jesus, that he is God's son who died and rose again for you. Or maybe you need to take a step of faith and speak out this message to others. Be courageous to say, this is good news. I'd love to share some good news with you. You know, I went to see my dentist only a couple of weeks ago. And uh, he's just taken over the practice from uh, my old dentist. And as I sat there in his room, he asked me how I was. How's the year been? And I said, despite COVID-19, it's been a good year. Knowing Christ makes a difference. There is joy and peace that Christ brings that helps me through this year or has helped me through this year. It brings life and joy and hope. And he was impressed by that and wanted to talk a little bit further. And we talked about COVID and he said, uh, I'm from Kenya originally and one of my cousins at the age of 53 died of COVID in Kenya. He said, some people may be not believing that this COVID is a real thing. I know it's real. My cousin at 53 has just died of COVID. He performed his work on my teeth at the end of it, on the way out, he said, I look forward to seeing you again. And as I walked out, he said, will you pray for me? Will you please remember to pray for me? Let me say to you, wherever you are, we have a message of good news. Let's share that with people we come into contact with in a loving and a gentle way. It is good news of great joy. Friends, there is no joy that compares to what Jesus brings. Nothing. You may have missed out on some trips this year. You may have missed out on some holidays this year. But let me say, his joy is better than a European holiday. His joy is better than four weeks on a beach in Queensland. It's better than a huge pay rise. It's better than a lavish wedding in Hawaii. It's just better. It's of great joy. 
Now, I remember the author, Josh McDowell, writing that when he was an atheist at university, he was drawn to the Christian students on campus. And he said, I didn't believe in the gospel. I didn't believe in Jesus' death and resurrection. I thought it was all religious nonsense. But I watched these Christians on campus, and I was terribly unhappy, he said, and I watched them on campus, and they were happy. That smiles on their faces. There was this joy that they had. And I wanted to tap into that. I wanted to find out what it was. And I went up to one of the girls and I said, can you tell me what it is that you have? Where do you get this joy and happiness? And don't give me any of this religious stuff. She said, it's not religion. It's Jesus. Knowing Jesus personally has transformed our lives. They challenged him to examine the evidence for the the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ and his life. He went away to examine the evidence as a university student, as a skeptic, to try to debunk Christianity, to prove that he was right and the Christians were wrong. And he was convinced by the evidence, became a committed follower of Jesus Christ, and his life was transformed by Jesus. He too found that great joy of knowing Christ. It's for all people. The skeptics like Josh McDowell and uh, maybe the religious people like I was growing up, It's good news for us. It was good news for the shepherds. You know, the shepherds, they were despised by the other respectable people in their day. And amazingly, only the lepers were regarded as lower than the shepherds. Can you believe that? Only the lepers were regarded as lower than the shepherds. Yet God comes and speaks to the shepherds. I love that. God doesn't just speak to the smart and and the affluent. He speaks to the lowly. Friends, that's good news this Christmas. Whoever you are, whatever you've done, whatever you've become, it's good, joyful news for you. A Savior has been born. Let me say, wherever you're watching this service this morning, from home, from a hospital bed, maybe even in prison, the good news is for you. A king has been born, a king in the raw line of David, the Messiah, the anointed one. The one that the people of God have been waiting for, for 700 years. Isaiah 9 says, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the greatness of his government, peace and peace, there will be no end. He will reign on David's throne and over his kingdom, establishing and upholding it with justice and righteousness from that time on and forever. The zeal of the Lord Almighty will accomplish this. They were looking forward to a new king, a saviour king. He is Christ the Lord. But what type of saviour? What type of king? Friends, he did not come to overthrow the Romans. No, not at all. He came to save us from our sins, Matthew 1, 21 says. Call him Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. And I need to remember today, and you need to remember today, that the most important thing we need saving from is not COVID-19. It's not war, it's not terrorism, it's not racism, it's not violence, but we need saving from our sins. Friends, the Bible is very clear, and I think our experience confirms that, that we're all sinners and rebels and moral failures. We need saving, we need rescuing. We need someone who will take our place and die for us. I must say, I don't think most Australians understand that. Most Australians think that other people need a saviour. Other people need rescuing, but not them, because they're pretty good. Or at least they're better than others. They don't think they need a saviour. Well, friends, Christmas reminds us that we need a saviour. God stepped into human history because we needed a saviour. I remember a well-known London newspaper in the early part of the 20th century asked the question of a number of authors. This was the question. What is wrong with the world. And people gave a variety of replies, and uh, the shortest was from G.K. Chesterton. He simply wrote, I am. What's wrong with the world? I am. He knew his brokenness, he knew his sinfulness, he knew his failures, he knew humanity was the problem. And friends, today at Christmas, unless you own your own brokenness and failures, you'll never see your need of a saviour you'll never come to Christ. But maybe your sins and your failures have become more stark during this year, during COVID-19. See, the tension of being at home all the time, together with your family, maybe with your spouse, has led to greater tension. 
or maybe having to homeschool your children, or needing to talk to your spouse and not just coexist in the same home, or coping with the extrovert when you're the introvert or vice versa. If you weren't sure you are a sinner before, after 2020, you know for sure, don't you? You need a saviour, rescuer. Romans 3.23 says, All have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Doesn't matter how hard you try, you always fall short of God's standards. You miss the mark. The picture is of someone with a bow and arrow aiming at, at a target at the back wall. You pull the arrow as hard as you can with all of your strength, trying to be as good as you can. And you pull it back and you shoot and your arrow always falls short. You miss the mark. You need a saviour. But friends, the good news is in Romans 6.23, for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. What a great gift this Christmas. I deserve death, but God offers me forgiveness and peace with God and reconciliation with God. It's a gift. It comes from a generous God, a grace-filled God. It's not, not something I earn, but something I receive as a gift. It's great news, isn't it? The birth of Jesus Christ is great news. So great we must embrace it and we must proclaim it. Don't keep it to yourself this Christmas. Share it with others that others too would find forgiveness and new life in Christ. Let me say publicly that after 44 years as a Christian, there is nothing that compares to knowing Christ our Lord and our Savior. He is a Savior King but secondly, we learn that he is a peacemaker. In Luke 2, 13 to 14, Luke records the words, Suddenly a great company of their heavenly host appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to men and women on whom his favor rests. I love that. Glory to God. He deserves the glory. He des deserves our worship. And on earth, peace to men and women on whom his favor rests. How does God bring this peace? I've already referred to it already, but how does God bring this peace? It all happens through the cross of Jesus. In Colossians chapter 1, the Bible says this, for God was pleased to have all his fullness dwell in him. Jesus is fully God. And through him to reconcile to himself, to bring together all things, whether things on earth or things in heaven, making peace through his blood shed on the cross. Once, he says, you were alienated from God and were enemies in your minds because of your evil behavior, but now he has reconciled you by Christ's physical body through death to present you holy in his sight, without blemish and free from accusation. So good, isn't it? Peace with God through the shed blood of Jesus Christ. He dies, you live. I was reading a little book this week by Max Lucado. He's an American author and pastor. And the little book was simply called, A Love Worth Giving to You at Christmas. And in that, he's, he tells this little sweet, sweet story, I call it. He said, a friend organized a Christmas cookie swap, that's biscuits for you Australians, a cookie swap for our church office staff. The plan was simple. Price of admission was a tray of cookies. Your tray entitled you to pick cookies from the other trays. Obviously pre-COVID, right? You could leave with as many cookies as you brought. Sounds simple, he says, if you can cook. But what if you can't? He said, I had a problem. I had no cookies to bring. So therefore, I would have no place at the party. I would be left out, turned away, shunned and dismissed. He said, are you feeling sorry for me yet? This was my plight. I can tell you what I did. I confess my need. Remember the cookie dilemma? This is the email I sent to the whole staff. I can't cook, so I can't be at the party. Did any of my assistants have mercy on me? No. Did any of my staff have mercy on me? No. Did any supreme justices have mercy on me? No. But a saintly sister in the church did have mercy on me. She had heard of my problem. How she heard, I do not know. Perhaps my name made it onto an emergency prayer list. But I do know this. Only moments before the celebration, I was given a gift. 
a plate of cookies, 12 circles of kindness, he calls them. And by virtue of that gift, I was privileged a place at the party. Did I go? You bet your cookies I went. Like a prince carrying a crown on a pillow, I carried my gift into the room, set it on a table and stood tall. And because some good soul heard my plea, I was given a place at the table. And more profoundly, he says, because God hears your plea, you'll be given the same. Only he did more so, much more than bake cookies for you. It was at once, he writes, history's most beautiful and most horrible moments. Jesus stood in the tribunal of heaven, sweeping a hand over all of creation, he pleaded, punish me for their mistakes. See the murderer? Give me his penalty. The adulteress? I'll take her shame. The bigot, the liar, the thief, do to me what you would do to them. Treat me as you would a sinner. And God did, he writes. For God died for sins once for all, the righteous for the unrighteous to bring you to God. Why did Jesus do this? It's love. So you could be forgiven and reconciled to God. But Locato continues, think about that for a moment, will you? Drink from that for a moment. Drink deeply. Don't just sip or nip. It's time to gulp this truth. It's time to let his love cover all things in your life, all secrets, all hurts, all hours of evil, minutes of worry. The mornings you woke in the bed of a stranger, his love will cover that. The years you peddled prejudice and pride, his love will cover that. Every promise broken, drug taken, penny stolen, every crossword, cuss word and harsh word, his love, his love covers all things. At Christmas 2020, let his love cover all things for the glory of his name and for the peace of your heart. Friends, Jesus is a saviour king, but he's a peacemaking king. Peace to men and women on whom his favour rests. See, the picture of being a person of God's favour was a Jewish way of saying that someone was numbered among God's chosen people. And I think this remark makes it clear that this offer of salvation does not become automatic for everyone. You need to respond by faith. You need to receive this Jesus at Christmas. Can't just know about it. You need to put your faith in this Christ and experience new life. Romans 5, verse 1 says, Therefore, since we have been justified through faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Friends, it's such good news, isn't it? Of great joy. There's nothing like peace with God. It's one thing COVID 19 can't take from you a thrill of hope. The weary world rejoices. For yonder breaks a new and glorious morn. Fall on your knees, O hear the angel voices. O night divine, O night when Christ was born. God bless you this Christmas. Ange has just reminded us that at Christmas time, we celebrate the coming of a saviour in whom we can have hope. As we sing our final song together, we're going to be declaring, In excelsis Deo, Glory to God in the highest. Would you please join us as we praise our great God together.
to God in the highest indeed. What a wonderful time it has been to celebrate the coming of Christ Jesus. We are so thankful that you've been able to join us. And so please let us know that you have. We want to know who it is, where it is that you're joining us from. So make sure you check in, please. Again, there's the email and the SMS down below that you can let us know that you've joined us today. And we'd love for you to continue to join us into the future. For those of you who join us every year at Christmas, really, we, you'd know that we give to the work of Baptist World Aid. And this year they've got their Be Hope campaign. And we're continuing to do that. So you can jump onto our website and there's a link there for you to follow where you can give to the work of Baptist World Aid in Nepal. And so please let us, let us know if you want any more details about that. But otherwise, jump online and give there. From this Sunday, from this Sunday, we will continue to live stream. There'll be a live stream at 9, 2, and 6. So please uh, come along again and let us know again that you joined us. And we're going to do that until January 24th. And so join us right throughout the beginning of next year. Uh, And then the 31st of January, we're actually going to have our vision launch. And that'll be a chance for you to hear about what it is that our church does and why we do what we do. And Andrew will come and speak to us and launch the year. We're hoping... We're hoping that we might be able to gather together at that time. But if not, there will again be live streams and the opportunity for us to be reminded of why we do what we do here at Naui Baptist Church. And then after that, you'll head straight into your launch series. And next year, looking at the idea of being the authentic church, how it is that we can live as the church that God has always called us to be, that we can tell people about this wonderful news that the light has come. Thanks again for joining us. Thanks also to those who throughout the year have been faithful in their, in their giving to the work of this church. We are so thankful for that. And just as a reminder, if you, you do give or would like to give to the work of this church, there's uh, ways to do that online. You can check that out on our website. Uh, you can direct deposit it. You can send it in via the online stuff. Or you can, if you need to, send in uh, cash via an envelope here to the church, drop it into the church office. We just want to thank you for being able to give and support the work of this church. So we want to thank you again for joining us, being reminded again of how it is that we can have this hope in a time that is difficult. The fact that there is a hope that has come. A weary world can rejoice. So thank you for joining us for our Christmas service and we look forward to seeing you soon into the future. For now, happy Christmas and enjoy this time of year. See you guys.